morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Anna. Hi. Hi. I tried to get some uh, mountains in the background to sort of Hi. match what you have going on, just <laughs> kind of like another part of the West. <laughs> oh, the years are real. <laughs> 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 or they're in in real time, I should say. These are also yeah. real. They're just in Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> but they're beautiful. Yes, yes. Well, that was funny this morning. Like, I think I ran into Zoom traffic right at nine o'clock um, <laughs> when I was opening up. Everything was like kind of slowed down and whatnot. New world. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm recording. I don't know if that's helpful. So this is like the weirdest story. I have tried to um, not record by default. Like it was like when they were changing the settings a long time ago, it like accidentally got set as like automatically start recording everything. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And I've tried to undo this setting like five times and it doesn't <laughs> stick. And so the only solution is if I actually pay attention to the upper left to stop it before, or I'm going to have to like, just like get rid of my personal meeting room, which I guess is not really recommended nowadays besides just your friends. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah. That's like an, a holdover from like the earlier versions of Zoom or whatnot. Like I keep unchecking the box and it keeps recording. But this might be helpful you know, if you want it recorded, actually. Actually, I would like to have it recorded. Okay. So no worries. It would, <laughs> then I can sort of put more in on the conversation. Yeah. Um, then you can fast then forward, find, drag, and yeah, sure. Yeah. No yeah, this whole Zoom world, it's like hard to have money. You need five different devices around you to see everything. So. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. One of these days, I'll tell you my story with Microsoft Teams and how there's now a four-year-old child that I have for the West Bay Data Innovation Hub username. <laughs> and all the privacy settings that go around, along with that, created out of desperation wow. with my Berkeley account not working temporarily. Um, yeah, so Zoom, I think it, it, that will work and I can post the video. Um, are we expecting Nick or Greg this morning, Gina, Anna? I hope so, but they might come in a little bit late. Morning meetings aren't super great for those folks. <laughs> no worries. Um, so last night, it wasn't as early as I had anticipated. It's been quite the bear of a week, but um, I shared, and I can share my screen. The slides. Yeah. Yeah. It might be easier if, um, I actually drop the link. Oh, the link is in the calendar invite. Look how organized I am. Um, yeah, so then you can actually edit it versus just watching on the screen and like pointing. <laughs> so it's pretty bare bones right now, but I think it gives us a good foundation um, to be adaptable for uh, the content day one. And then the plan is still that um, uh, we'll all be l with our listening ears um, attuned on day two and um, pick up any sort of like sound bites or visuals and so forth. Um, and then just let you know, Adi, what like, hey, for that blank space on this board, this was set on day two and it could go nicely, but then you don't need to listen to like, you know, 20 lightning talks and all these other things that are going to get a little bit more down into the weeds. Yeah. Okay. And can I clarify one other thing just in terms of the setup? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm trying to get a GoPro so that I can do the fast recording. I ordered one and then they canceled my order yesterday. So I don't know what's up with that. So I'm going to ask around and see if I can borrow one from somebody. Okay. Um, so hopefully I can get the, the video type of thing that you want. Um, no worries. If, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if you don't get a GoPro, I know that shipments have been kind of nuts lately. Um, you could always like just um, take a few like, photos I know it's kind of weird I mean I guess if you don't have any tripod whatsoever you could do like a, a selfie of you drawing or something that's just kind of like action and it doesn't have to be um you know like the video recording if that's awkward 
from a, a tripod mounting perspective. Um, I think anything that just sort of shows not the artwork, but like at least like some part of your arm <laughs> drawing or something like that to get the flavor could be nice. Um, or we could always use the beauty of Zoom, I guess, and for like some portion of it, um, I don't know, Anna, just brainstorming here, like if there is no video um, capability that's easy, like one way is, is just like this type of thing. Well, yeah. well so are we, in any one of the ways in which I've been working on some other jobs is that I'll have two um, two devices set up. One um, phone that is placed above my so it, one way I can set up is a paper on a table, and then the camera is above, mm -hmm. and so it watches what I'm doing. And I'll, that's what I'll use probably if I don't get the GoPro or actually if okay. I get the GoPro, that's probably the way in which I'll be set up. Okay. And then I can just either do time lapse on my phone um, if I'm not connected to Zoom on that lens. Or the other option is that I'm on Zoom and then people have the option of double, you know, you can sort of double tap on a screen to just, you know, if I just wanted to watch you talk, like, or just watch you, I can double tap on your screen and, like, your screen stays as my main thing, like, the entire time. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so really? You yeah, you can pin a video out of, you know, however many people are on Zoom, you can pin a I particular video that. and watch the video. So, yeah, like right now, if you double tap on, or depending on what you're mm -hmm. on, a computer or laptop, it's a double tap on an iPad. It's a mm -hmm. pin video, which is an option that pops um. up on a desktop. Our laptop, and then on the phone, it's slightly different, but similar to that. But you can pin a video, and so with that, like people have been able to like go in and like you know stay focused in on the drawing. You actually see the drawing better than you would in any type of live setting because you're able to get just that particular view. I work on a, I'm working on a smaller piece of paper but I just keep it going as like a banner roll. Hmm. And so it's big, long drawings. And I'll think about that. And so as we talk about the boards, what I'll figure out is how to splice them to be able to then cut them out and give them to you for, you know, the right size. So gotcha. To, gotcha. You know, so it's kind okay. of a process piece, but that's just yeah. something to know. It's an option. I can be on two different video screens. Um, one listening and one as the video. The other option is that you don't have that video and I'm just using it for time lapse. Yeah, I'm wondering how that would work. I guess we, we could use it for time lapse if you have your phone set up and it has the capacity to record for like a decent amount of time to show some time lapse snippet. Um, so that would be one. I think that's a good plan. Um, the pin video thing, that's amazing. I didn't realize they had that feature. People were asking for it like months ago and we're like, nope, no, I don't think there's any way to do it. Um, so with that functionality, Anna, I'm thinking like at the end of the day one, when we want to um, show like all of the different boards and get, um, and I should specify the artwork boards, not the board of the water board. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So when we want to show all the artwork and get some feedback from the organizers and any speakers who are doing like the debrief, that would be a good thing for whoever is the Zoom uh, controller to be able to just test that like, okay, we can pin Audi's screen out of the matrix of people so that um, she doesn't have to like share a screen, but we actually just use the video of, we can see sort of, um, directly as she's pulling things in front of the video. Is that better? Yeah, so we're using Microsoft Teams for the recap meetings. Oh, okay. I, don't, I don't know if, if there's a, an ability to pin. I have another meeting later today, so I can test that out. Okay. Um, but yeah, we can, we can make sure that, I think with Microsoft Teams, we can see. Well, then we should use it Monday. We're using something different. Oh, you, you, sorry. You mean like during the sessions? 
You want to be pinned? Do you mean during the, Meredith, do you mean during the session or? or no, I mean for the debrief meeting, which is, I think Anna added you. We just created that um, at the end of the day, yeah. like the small organizational huddle. So oh, not okay. all the participants, but it, it, it does mean that you should download the, the Teams app and just test that that works because it's a little rough sometimes to go between. Um, and we definitely want to be able to see you and the artwork for that session so we can get yeah. you know, feedback. Yeah. Um, so but that no, will, that'll be an interesting thing to do because what will have to happen is or one of the options, if we've got the video going on it and it's able to be highlighted or as the view that people are seeing, because it'll be like a long banner roll of everything. So it'd be kind of like pulling the um, paper underneath and sort of stopping at different moments. So it'll, it'll be interesting to do feedback on. And is that immediately after the call? I think Anna set up a half an hour ish break. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you could cut things if that's easier to handle. Yeah, it's it's not so much about cutting as it is just about trying to figure out like how to showcase that or mm. even send photographs or something like with just that that time frame. And it's it's just simply because of the paper and time and yeah, so yeah. It, it, yeah, well, I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay, yeah, it might be easier to just do like the the photos that are sort of at different points throughout the day. And then um, I don't know if Microsoft Teams has like a whiteboard function or we can just take manual notes and say like, this is, you know, how we'd want it. Or we could just use the Google slides and the pictures there and we'll just like type on top of it. That might be the simplest actually. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, yeah, so to clarify, it is Zoom for everything else. It's just the yeah. internal team huddle. How did it go? Like, how are we going to share, you know, and sort of wrap up uh, the artwork with uh, day two input? That, that'll be the end of the day huddle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so maybe we just keep it simple. And um, if you have a GoPro or if you have your um, phone to do like a time lapse, but we will uh, not We'll plan to not show you on the video screen. Okay, great. So that gets, that you're, gets yeah, well. you're, it's secret that you're there for most of day one and that you're like kind of there for day two by proxy with our input. So, okay, cool. Hey, Nick. Hey, how's it going? Good. Just to let you know, we're recording so that, you know, we, we've been brainstorming, sort of iterating, and then coming to consensus so that there's a clear <laughs> documentation. Oh. Awesome. So let's see. Oh, I was going to share my screen again, but I was trying to pull up if there was some other thing agenda wise. Here. Did you just join the slides, Nick? Oh, What's I was that? just going to chat the slides. I just opened, I, mean, I just I think, opened the I'm excited most about thing. I think you might be the um, anonymous narwhal on my screen, and I'm jealous. Just <laughs> narwhals I see an anonymous ferret, <laughs> an anonymous mink. Um, sorry, I was going to, I will share my screen and one more second, I'm trying to pull up the tab that has the actual agenda. For the symposium? Yeah. Do you know the URL offhand or yeah. can you paste it? Yeah, I have it. I was just going to point Adi to the Slack um, link and the back channel uh, team talk. So I just posted the direct link to the program, which um, is a PDF. Okay. And then here's the direct link to the Slack channel. Awesome. I think I just shared my screen and I'm going to try to organize all of these different tabs. Um, okay. 
Yeah, the Slack group is, this is the name. So if you have the app, it's like this, this name, but it's on the actual, um, oh, you shared the, the program PDF, but the actual, um, the website has the Slack. Uh, yes. One, two, right? Oh, it's this it's one. All Different tab. Sorry. I have a huge monitor, so this isn't as egregious for me, but <laughs> apologies as I move these around. Okay. So we've got the <clears throat> Google Slides. Do I, need to go to, do I need to go to Slack right now or can I wait? No, yeah. it can wait. I just wanted to make sure you knew where it was and then when Anna sends the link and everything. So um, on the symposium website, it has the CaliPA stream, but Adi could listen in on the Zoom, right? Is yeah. She yeah. In as a panelist? Okay. So this is only like a, I don't know, I guess backup if Zoom completely crashes that Cali PA should be live streaming something, right? Yes, yes they will. With some delay. And then there's this continue the conversations on Slack. So that, that bit.ly is the same as the one that you'll get um, from Anna. And we created a team talk channel so that it, it would be easier if you're used to Slack to um, use that team talk channel for uh, discussion just because it would be threaded versus the Zoom chat is going to be just like a yeah. lot of logistics stuff and not necessarily about like, you know, pinned threads about the artwork. Does yeah. that make sense to everyone or do we need to create like a separate just Audi channel for graphic stuff? We can do that. Um, if that's I wasn't, audio. Well, I wasn't sure who was going to be on the team talk and what we'd be talking about that's not handled with the Zoom logistics stuff. Um, I think Greg added everyone, like, like all of the volunteers to the oh, okay. talk. Well, maybe let's just create a, a channel just about the artwork then. So like sure, team art talk or something, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> Is that for the day of or leading up to? Yes. Before, during, and if you want to, after. Um, I think, yeah, we're going to start using it. it. It's already in use now, like the Slack channel for people like logging in early. Um, we were hoping to have um, this graphic that I'm most excited about with the quail background that we discussed as mm -hmm. um, a way where all the participants, so like 500 or so are registered, hopefully a, a good portion of those people actually show up. We're hoping to have them like fill it in and share it via Slack or social media. So some people might do that like before uh, Monday morning. Okay. So is this a uh, quail background that I'll draw or a quail background that you're going to get from somewhere else? Okay. So I'm um, first board is me creating a background for that. Okay. Yep. Got it. Yeah, and Anna, if you have like I could screenshot it or if you have this um this this uh a mm -hmm. file file for the quail and everything um as like inspiration if you could drop that into the slides that would be helpful. Yeah, I'll work on that. So Adi, you'll, you'll recognize the sort of water drop as part of our bear thing, right? Like same graphic designer, sort of a theme there, but then obviously the quail that we discussed with the ones and zeros and. Yeah, and I like the new edges around the water drop that give it sort of the, getting the message out there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, those were, um, they're integrated into the bear arms, I think. I don't have one with, do I have one with me? Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> so this, so you need, I need to get you the quail background by Friday morning, basically, so that you can have that to load up and we can go back and forth or whatever. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be good because we have a public AB 1755 um, meeting Friday afternoon, 2 to 4 p.m. And so we could get a little bit of a lift on social media and, um, 
so forth, like starting to get that out and reminding people that uh, Monday morning, bright and early, is the symposium. Okay, is that 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern or Pacific? Pacific. Pacific, awesome. Um, Anna and Nick, are you good with um, this draft of I'm most excited about? And then they just fill in the blank. Is there anything else that you'd like to see on this uh, sort of social media card background that people would fill in and then share on Slack and different media channels? Um, I like, I'm excited about it. I was, the only thing is like I'm interested about or I'm interested in hearing about, but it's like kind of the same thing. Um, so, yeah. um, I think that'll work for, for almost everything. So I think it's broad enough that it'll get people thinking and, um, at least initially. So, and then maybe, um, uh, easy to follow up with like after too, or I, you know, I was, I was most excited to hear about, you know, or I'm trying to think of like how to do it in the past tense too, after the thing, you know, after, you know, I, I was so, my favorite part of today was, and then, you know, something like that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um. Meredith, do you want me to just do the quail drawing or do you want me to also um, do the lettering or do you want to just have, and then you can put the lettering on top? Um, hmm. originally I was thinking that you would integrate the lettering. Um, mm -hmm. so it looks a little bit more cohesive rather than, oh, we just took a picture from anywhere and then like, you know, yeah. typed on it. Um, and so I was trying to think if there's a way, um, it's too bad I can't draw on here very easily, but you could kind of imagine that there's like this background where um, it's like mostly open where people can, you know, type in or fill in something type of thing. Um, and maybe we could get, maybe not the third one. I just typed that so I wouldn't lose it with the notes. I'll put it down here. But maybe the I'm most excited about or let's discuss. I wonder if like sort of um, people sort of flanking both sides of the thing with thought bubbles that sort of say those things. Because I, I feel like you would, you could fill in the blank for either of these prompts like together like you're yeah. most excited about or you're most excited about discussing or maybe you're not excited about discussing it but you want to discuss and like the sort of whatever they fill in the blank could be the same I guess um it reminds me of something we did for the water pavilion a bit yeah. where we had the cards and there were a couple of different questions but the the main sort of entree in the middle was just blank and it would be kind of obvious people wouldn't have to like highlight that they're filling out the I'm most excited about and they generally pick things that were applicable for both. You got it. So I can do that. Cool. I'm so glad that like even with me just waving my hands and you can't see them very well that we get each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, this <laughs> I know years, years of, of honing odd communication. <laughs> <laughs> virtually um it should say though like um the name of the event right or the hashtag like so this template just says california water boards but you want it to say like the um california water data symposium 2020 right yeah um Cal hold on i think it's california water data science is the long oh one. yeah you're right good California Water Board's Water Data Science Symposium. How can we shorten that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I think if we just use California Water Data Dive, the hashtag, uh -huh. if you want it to be really short. Um, I don't know if that's descriptive enough for somebody seeing this sort of out of context on like Twitter. Gotcha. Uh, is, it, is it the Data Science Symposium? Yeah, it's yeah, the I mean, California Water Data Science Symposium. You can get rid of the water boards, yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe we don't even need the year. Um, yeah, that's true. It is now. <laughs> the longest year we've ever experienced. <laughs> we'll remember. We'll remember 2020. Um, so would you like this to be on top or below or how prominent, just so Adi has a sense of... 
I'm thinking kind of similar to what we've got in the draft um, or the the one the image that you have there of the quail with a hashtag along the bottom. Mm -hmm. The puppet the water data science symposium in that similar location. Gotcha. Um, one, it ties in with this, and I'll try and use a similar style font as well, hand-drawn font. Um, and that also works if we're um, going to have like multiple thought bubbles at the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that'll be great. Okay. Um, if you could do the like uppercase, lowercase, um, like the Q CA water data dive, since it's a little bit shorter, people can kind of parse that, but um, with uh, upper and lowercase for this, I think will be easier right. for people to read. Okay. Um, I think it could still be like caps like this, just smaller caps for the California otter. Ada, you know what I mean. <laughs> I haven't had my coffee this morning, guys. Okay. okay. So that one. I do have a hard stop at 11, so just making sure. Okay. Cool. Okay. So we're done with board one. This will be um, Friday morning release. Or Friday, sorry. Friday, even noontime Pacific, I think, would be able to start getting the word out. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to do something just exactly the same, but changing the thought bubble to say my favorite part of today was? That was just a thought. I didn't have to say that either. I just was. I think that's pretty easy and useful, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it just, I just kind of like ties it all in. It's like in the beginning of the day, you're excited about this. And then maybe something mm -hmm. at the end of the day was completely different that you heard that was not what you were maybe came for, but that you found really thought provoking. I wonder if there's a way, so, because my favorite part, it biases towards positive feedback. Sure, right. Like, if it's like, today I learned, you might yeah. be able to get. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't real thrilled with that, the language. I'm just having coffee, too, so I was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, next steps, or. I mean, you have such a big audience that like kind of having a couple of different prompts and also yeah, just knowing good. the culture could like be good because some people may be like, oh, I didn't really learn anything, but they might respond to um, um, I'm interested in learning more about or um, Um. Yeah, I was thinking, let's keep talking or continue the conversation or something like that since we've been trying to push that with the Slack channel. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's like a little sign, like one of the quails is holding a sign that says like, next steps. Or actually, you know, the quail could hold all of these signs. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Or the signs can be in the back. I defer to the artists, but I'm just like brainstorming here. Today I learned, let's keep discussing, like that maybe like next steps could be like a little sign or something. That probably gets to the point. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and then, so that's the beginning and end. Um, we had discussed previously just like a, a diagram kind of inspired by the, the uh, DOT car with all the labels types of things on the what's in a quail um, and the resilience of a quail. Are we still thinking like sure. explaining the quail? Oh yeah, so um, on the last page of the program, Mm -hmm. Audie, we have some text explaining why we use the quail and not a bear, <laughs> like we, we have been in the past. Um, yeah. So it's page 45 or 45, and um, the did it's you know. the, yeah, the did you know. So it's the California state bird, their communal to promote the sense of um, community that we want to bring to the science symposium. So more than just 
water boards people talking to water boards people, but different agencies, different communities. Um, they're everywhere in California, just like water and the issues and challenges associated with that. And then they're also sensitive to environmental change, but um, have been shown to be very resilient. And so we're hoping that through building the water data community and working together, um, we too can be resilient in the face of climate change, fire impacts, you know, getting access to clean water for all, all of that sort of stuff. So those are like the four highlight pieces for why we chose the quail this year. So I pasted in the notes of slide three. I think it's a game of like less words. So yeah. can we bold the ones that we think we'd want Audie to sort of highlight? Slide three. Inclusive, representative, small communities. I don't know if you need the other one. Maybe. I think some of the content could go with like tweets accompanying the visual, but they don't need to all like go in the visual. So, um, yeah, I agree. I do like the specificity of like, if you kind of imagine the quail and they're overcoming and facing these challenges, I like the specificity of having some of these words, this access to clean water, fire impacts, climate change, like somehow, like maybe they're all visuals, the water, fire, and like earth, <laughs> earth, wind, and fire. Um, <laughs> Not everybody knows that it's the official state bird, so I guess we probably want to put that in the label. <laughs> and, uh, I'm really excited. I've been, I've been finding all kinds of pictures of quail cubbies to play with this. I'm excited about the quail. They're adorable. <laughs> they are. They are adorable. I mean, in, in what pomp and circumstance they have, all of them. I mean, they're, and they're so, I mean, yeah, this is, this will be fun. I'm excited about this. <laughs> I love it. Are we going to get like a what's in a quail, the professional version and the outtakes? I mean, we, we can't underestimate the importance, you know, guys, of uh, really <laughs> building that community spirit of the organizers who go through all of this effort. And so if they have like a secret quail and a secret quail sticker, yeah. I could see this group leveraging that one. <laughs> I don't know that I can turn us all into quail caricatures, uh -huh. but I can try. <laughs> 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 because they're all quite uh -huh. fat. And, uh, uh, Greg, <laughs> Greg sent a pretty good text pic picture of himself last night where he looked like a quail with his hair. Just. Yeah, I think, I mean, like the very characteristic uh, top, like plume thing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, funny. that's funny. That would be the internal one. I don't think we would put that out on the social media. <laughs> like, here's your organizing team uh, <laughs> dressed in costume of quail. So do we have all of the key bolded things in the notes here and there's... No question. Any questions about this one? Just kind of a fun. No. Nope. Yeah. Works for us. Cool. Um, and Anna, are you going to like mention this, or is it just sort of like this Easter egg for people to find at the by the time they get to the back of the program? Or uh, let me see if I put something in the. I haven't mentioned it on. Um, explicitly in like the intro slides, but I can. We probably, <clears throat> we probably need to sort of in tandem with the, why is there like a bunch of quail or at least one quail in the background of this, I'm most excited about like introduction thing, right? So it'll probably be pretty natural. Yeah, I have the, the um, first image in the, opening presentation. Um, it's the eighth slide and it's the agenda and I have the the image that we're using right now and I can do like learn more on page 45 or whatever. Um, so it's in the slide deck. 
I was thinking like this is something where Adi could just do it ahead of time. Like it doesn't have to be Friday because we're not asking people to fill it in necessarily. Um, people who ask between like Friday and Monday, you know, will be like, they can ask and look it up <laughs> in the program yeah. or whatever. But like Monday morning as we're like, hey, you might have seen these mysterious, like I'm most excited about things with quail. Like here's the image that's the what's in a quail. Um, yeah, and I'll make sure that there's a good, you know, it's not just quail, but it's quail and water, so mm -hmm. it makes sense. So it's like yeah. quail in the landscape with water. So yeah. As best as I can in a small space that still leaves room for people to type their own thing. Right, in, so. right. Cool. Okay, so then um, the first three are like easy. <laughs> Bless you. and ready to go. And then I think we can move on to the ones that are um, a little bit more, well, this one might be basically ready to go too. I was thinking it's always helpful for us to have like an overarching, like the entire meeting themes and high level like subjects in one image. So this would, um, <clears throat> Be the title. I think having the year on this one would be fine. Yeah. Um, and we, then the title. We do have a lot good. of section mm -hmm. so that could get cumbersome. Yeah. Um, I added a comment. So maybe if we just kind of focus around the the subtitle. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know where the comment go, but the subtitle and then, um, you know, I think the other thing. I think you'll have to do undo on your part. If you want to oh, see okay. Yeah, there you go. For what it's worth, without my coffee, I tried to control Z for you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Google, Google Docs doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, Okay. Yeah, so I agree. There were a lot of different titles. And so having sort of bigger buckets that encompass all of those, like you read this and it's like, okay, environmental justice. I mean, if there's any key phrases that we want to put, just having a sense of how many types of uh, titles we'd want to put in here would be helpful. Less is more often. I mean, if we just keep it to the sub theme, I think that's mm -hmm. fine. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, I think that that's sufficient. Um, yeah, you don't want to get. Yeah, I think it, I think that's probably the good a good middle ground for it. So I I had open data and water data as well, um, but I like water data is in the title already. <laughs> These so, could be hashtags. We've done ones where we've had like multiple hashtags and as long as they're kind of short. So you've got the CA water data dive. And if we have like hashtag open data, hashtag water data, like that kind of captures it at the bottom, but doesn't make it f feel like random word cloud. Yeah. I like that. Hmm. I was trying to think what else would sort of go in that overarching one, like filling in the key sound bites or um, like VIP speaker things. And I realized that for the sort of more like one level down substantive and maybe instead of building a more resilient future, there's something about the partnering with communities here, like a little bit deeper dive than just the title. Um, yeah. Sort of welcoming things, but it might be a blend. Maybe some of the like top level takeaways are in this one, and then we have some of the other quotes in one that's. Hmm. Meredith, just be aware that um, for this slide, it's a great looking slide. I really like it. As soon as where it says partnering with and it's gone over that light background it's difficult to read it, it you know it's, it doesn't come through real well so you mainly need to use that blue area for your text so just think about that in terms of how much yeah that 
that like has a lot more has a better understanding is easier to to see um so just think about that in terms of how much text you're going to put in these slides yeah sorry this slide um these slides are all for you uh just for brainstorming like what the boards would look like yeah so yeah but now so, this, this isn't something that i'm creating this is one that you're using throughout so, no wait, no sorry. yeah um, we should we should explain. So this is the background for like the the symposium, more or less, Anna, right? Yeah. So this is <laughs> the title slide for the symposium. It's like the waterboard standard PowerPoint template, right? So yeah. we're using that. Just like yeah, so and we were we were thinking of like whatever your overarching like um, entire meeting like summary images might just have like a little bit of a new like a riff of that like wave background somehow to mirror what people are seeing through all the different slides in the symposium but oh, the, okay. the image would still be like you know what we've done before for different events and so i'm thinking like well what do we put in there um besides the title and the different hashtags. I don't think we need the logo, so you can kind of ignore that, but I thought like having some sort of a wave and then um, having like the themes or titles of sessions, but we have too many sessions right now. Yeah, there's a lot. I apologize, I'm somehow not getting it. Um, so on each one, so let me just make, get, Clear. So on each one of the boards that I'm doing, we're wanting to have a swoosh. So I can figure out like a, a way to have a title on each one of those boards that has a swoosh that incorporates this in it. It would be more like the symbol of the California water boards mm -hmm. here in the left. And that like then I could put the the name of the session that's taking place sort of around that swoosh if that could work you could do that i was i was not planning to make it like super restrictive um just putting it out there as like one element that could be used to tie things together besides the quail um i was thinking for the overarching uh like main title one you know how like for an event we would have like a, a welcome to the thing and it has you know the title of the event but you didn't necessarily do that for every single board when you're listening in um so just to have like for that that top one the takeaway themes i like what you're putting there anna that is what i had intended when we drafted this so <laughs> having some of these themes that she put below accessibility adaptation agency change communication all of these questions i think that overarching one could be done um, ahead of time and you could plug in like a quote from a queen or something like that how you've done before when you live scribe um, but most of the content could be done like you know ahead or after you know like you don't have to necessarily live populate something that is just the overarching um, okay so so we'll have one board that's a summary board yeah okay i'm trying i'm trying to just get the the flow here <laughs> um where's the agenda again because the thing is, is that these summary, you know, nobody's going to see them in the midst of it. It's all afterwards, really. So my brain is twisting around trying to understand how to make this all work virtually. Well, if you look at it, this agenda, it's very okay. simple with three sessions. Um, okay. For day one. Yeah, Tuesday has more. And so this summary board would be like the high level of both days so that if someone said like, hey, what happened at the California Water Data Science Symposium June 29th through 30th, this would be the one that we show them. Got so it, I was just trying it. to think of like, how can we set it up so that um, we in a sense 
we know some of the questions and the themes and the title of the sessions. We don't know necessarily the sound bites of what people are going to say and the most important takeaways yet, but we know at least the topics. Got it. So this is something that I can really just wait till after the day is done and then you've got the second day summary as well to create this larger summary board. Yeah, I think the summary board, I mean, it, I guess it depends on how big of a working space you have. Um, if it's, you know, the multiple feet long, then we could do this summary board and have, you know, the themes and then like have a couple of the takeaways and that would be fantastic. But I wasn't sure if we were limited in like desk space type of thing. Oh, we're definitely, well, and more than anything, we're limited in just the time of listening and drawing and having, you know, two, two boards going at once is, yeah. just, you know, um, challenging. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, wish, I wish I had a clone. I wish I did. <laughs> it would be so much, it would be a great partner. So it, it's just a matter of trying to figure out how to... get these turned around fast enough for you and you know get enough information out of the sessions to even then be able to translate it over to high level summary so. yeah so structure and like fill in the blanks will be our friend so i'm thinking like how we did for the um water data challenge um i don't know if i have that handy one second. Well, um, what I'll do is I'll create a, a template and mm -hmm. I'll have the summary board up on the wall somewhere and then I'll be able to you know switch over and populate what I can what seems to really be most alive out of the different sessions yeah um, and it'll just be basic until it gets built out you know further so it'll just take a little time but uh and then I'll have, yeah, because that one we had the high, the top piece and then the launch meetups, the hackathons awards already laid out and only the stuff below got filled out during the session. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anna and Nick, does that sort of work for the overarching summary? That would sort of be like this level of scale so designed to be like full screen slide you see like some of the sessions throughout day one and day two and then the thought bubbles like probably we wouldn't want any more than these in terms of takeaways yeah i think that's i think that's great this okay fantastic, yeah. awesome mm -hmm. yeah can you drop this one into the slide somewhere just as like a backup reference slide maybe at the end just to have that Oh, sure. Available. I can get you the high res. I'll just paste. Um, I don't need the high res. Just a, just a, okay. that little reminder. Reminder. Is okay, cool. Yeah. Great. Okay. And so since we're okay. short on time, so that was like the basic one. Um, I was thinking the community engagement, we might have enough things as you're listening for day one to highlight some of the like diverse voices or stakeholders. Um, questions, calls to action. Okay. And then the third one, which is another like sort of fill in over time. And I think this is all fine. Like even if it's only, you know, 60% filled in after the day, um, we can help you fill in um, from day two, this like idea of the road, the ecosystem, since it's the fifth symposium. Um, I wanted to get Anna and Nick's perspective on like the roadmap, if there's other things besides AB 1755, the water data challenge, you know, which is now in its third year. There's the formation of the California Water Data Consortium. I will type all of this out for you, Adi, on the notes. <laughs> so um, it's not acronyms. Um, there was the data innovation management team. Is that something that should be like elevated in this ecosystem? I think any sort of promotion for that would be good for um, for us personally. Um, 
and Ephraima in general. Um, mm -hmm. Do we have anything about our, the water boards? Um, shoot, what's the official? Let me look up the official name of our resolution, our open data resolution, um, which is, you know, governs pretty much all of this work. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we would probably get everyone's feedback at the end of day one. So there's like the framework of this sort of road or river type of thing, five years. So there's like five, obviously like five different symposia that sort of are out there. Um, and then these, and then like, I think it's important to say like, what else should we put on here that's like, a success story or a win in the spirit of like open water data innovation and to let people like say it and then put it on there. Yeah. And the other thing too, in terms of like the timeline for these, I, I think it's, it would be good if, you know, it takes a little bit of time before they're complete so that mm -hmm. we can incentivize people. Hey, if you want to see the finished product, join slack because that's where we're going to share it mm. so i was yeah i was thinking of the visual if there's a way like if it's sort of flowing from the bottom to the top like left to right um for like audi's artwork to sort of signal that people should be com making commitments you know if not on the board to each other and like openly in the community for certain like additional goals building off of this momentum and maybe it's as simple as, you know, there's a person standing there in the upper corner holding a sign that says, I commit to doing whatever, and then just like prompting that thought. Yeah. In terms of the brainstorming vision, I, I don't know if there's a way to sort of um, visualize or like acknowledge the challenges in the mo moment with like COVID-19, systemic racial inequity is going to come up as a theme here and sort of seeing like we're on this road, it's been five years, like right now it's tough. We're obviously all meeting virtually. That'd be a fun thing to draw. Yeah. <laughs> like all the little bubbles of like 500 people who ever registered. Um, and then like moving forward, we're going to need to make these like open and transparent commitments to each other, not just about like, sharing water data but like a number of like other um, pieces of information and you know analysis and so forth so what y'all always had in the background you know talking about diversity and inclusivity within the data science so it's just really seems like pulled it up to the forefront as a stronger conversation I'm curious to see what happens in the discussion on Monday. yeah yeah I definitely think that that'll be brought up um, which is which is great. And then um, the human right to water, I think is something that over the past five, I don't know when that became like the term, Nick, um, but I know it's something, accessibility to water that the water data or the science symposium has trying to promote and make people aware of over the past couple of years too. So that could yeah. be some, like the initial stages of, you know, understanding our, health the health of our water watersheds and then kind of moving into human rights water climate change fire um environmental justice all of those sorts of things yeah it was 2012 um <laughs> i know all this legislation we actually yeah. created a video and i will share it um it's going to be played on friday and it sort of outlines some of these milestones and i have the script since i helped draft it so um I'm not the one that called the challenge community extraordinary or, or some other word like that. That was somebody else, but I left it in. Um, <laughs> and um, there's also a link to this video, which is going to be familiar to um, Adi from October back in 2018. And I was actually thinking, Anna, it's only three or four minutes. Um, I was thinking of playing it at the beginning of day two. It's got Rafa, it's got like, you know, a bunch of folks from the community talking about the impact. And I think it's going to be really great to say like, this is like what people were saying in 2018. And then the second year, um, you know, we had 40% of the teams from the first year continue and new ones and we got bigger and better type of thing um, yeah. It sort of like goes to the momentum and it's been a while since um, People had you know been on film So it'd be kind of cool to like pull that from the archives and we never really had a chance to like play it at such a big um, venue 
Yeah, I mean, you have 15 minutes plus some wiggle room. So um, I think we can definitely fit that in for launching day two. Sorry, Adi, you were going to say something. Well, no, and it'll just be a nice reminder of when we used to be able to get together in person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. just a quick overview. So we've got the three different diagrams, or the three different preps um, of the, the two quail background and then the quail ecosystem. Then we've got a summary board that I'll uh, do pre-work on so I can populate it throughout the day. And there'll be three of those, or no, just one of those. Just one of those for the, at least for day one, if not day two as well. Um, yeah, the summary board is for day one and day two. Um, I can make a note explicitly for that. And then um, the other summary one is just like road path forward or river maybe might be more appropriate um, yeah. with the timeline. I think the first summary board does not have any sense of time. It's really just like importance yeah. of the themes, the sort of compelling. Uh, yeah, just in of the moment. And then we'll have the the last piece is day of on Monday, live drawing the sessions that are going on. Yeah, and so like, um, I will defer to, you know, knowing that you've got the ecosystem one and the overarching summary board to also potentially fill in if there's something that's really like, wow, it's got to go on those. But yeah. otherwise, the ones that are just like, okay, maybe this is less surprising, but it's important to like, you know, note sort of like the second tier of um, uh, questions, calls to action, and like specific specificity those would go in the live drawing and I've only put one here is like this building a more resilient future that would tie in to the water data challenge and so having some like you know of those uh, themes of diverse voices and key questions that lend themselves to data um, calls to action and imagining their future with data is what we're looking to you know pluck from this and and use for the summer but there may be other like you know session okay. ones that could be like a, an additional card not not yet shown here okay well that sounds good i feel like i've got awesome. a good all things if i got any questions as i dive into it um tomorrow and friday i'll uh participate in the slack channel for the graphics and um and go from there awesome yeah or you could just tag directly like a common thread on this um slide space that's probably going to be the easiest for us to like exchange um you know drawings and comments and everything because we can do it spatially quite easily yeah awesome. well, i've got quite a few things to do in the next 48 hours <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get really good at drawing quail <laughs> i am i am so excited to go play with drawing quail so exciting awesome all right. Well, thank you. I'm sorry I have to drop off. No but, worries. Um, okay. Yeah, it's really great to connect with you guys and looking forward to uh, Monday. I'm not sure if I, yeah, I need to make sure I have the right links and everything for Monday to be able to log in. I don't think I've registered anywhere, so I'm not getting. Updates. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to, Adi. I'll send you the direct Zoom link um, probably on Thursday. I think, or Friday um, for day one. I won't send you day two because I don't, you know, you, you won't need to attend the Zoom on day two. Meredith and I are gonna kind of bring you back and I don't wanna buck up your calendar. Um, but I'll, I'll send you the, the meeting invite for day one and then if, you know, if you need anything else, just let me know. All right, thank you all so much and good luck in the final preparations. Thanks. Thanks. We're gonna need it. <laughs> So Anna and Nick, I can stay on for the, the full time so we can just like wrap up the notes. Yeah, that sounds good. Bye, Adi. Bye, Adi. Okay. Oh man, I was missing this whole like chat thing here. I can um I can stop the recording so that the file's not crazy large for Adi, and then we can go through the slides. Yeah.
I added some notes to that last, um, the road path forward um, to the speaker notes. Um, oh, okay. Just some uh, different, um, you were talking about kind of wins and things that we've been yeah. forward. So there's some ideas in there, some that what that are in line. You, you can't see it there, but it's in the speaker notes. But that's the, what, the best way I could see it. Um, okay, let me. But like sure. the safer program, the safe, affordable funding for equity and resilience in drinking water, that's kind of ties in multiple elements. Yep. And our open data resolution, which is kind of, mm -hmm. how, you know, where the symposium even came from, like the original like idea, what it's building towards for the water boards in particular, and then the open mm -hmm. data portal, or putting all of our open information stuff like that. But, uh, Can we um, help Adi by putting dates on these? It uh, might be easiest. One's the first one's two thousand eighteen. Um, yeah. Safer is going to be twenty twenty and beyond, or twenty nineteen and beyond. Um, I'm going to put it on the left if that's okay. Then yeah, that's it'll be easy for the timeline. The open data portal. Whew, I don't even know when that started. Um, let's see. Let's look at the about page. What does it really say? Well, so the human right to water actually predates this like ecosystem five years. So I think um, it makes sense for this ecosystem thing to sort of focus on the last five years of the symposium, but then we can put like a bunch of stuff on the left that's sort of like, you know, precursors to mm -hmm. this. So, um, so the very first one was in 2015. Is that right? Which one? The Please. first uh, data science 16. symposium. 2016. 2016? 2016. Yeah. 16, 17, yes, you're right. <laughs> okay. Um, Which is probably in line with when the open water data, the California Open Data yep. World went online. Um, do you happen to know if it was before or after it the legislation? Um, I don't. I mean, let's see. Uh, a record of the month that it was probably. I'm looking at the about page, it doesn't really have any dates, it just says. Um... Hmm. So the AB 1755 was approved and chaptered in September. Yeah, September of 2016. And the symposium um, was? The symposium was at the time that I will know in June, June okay. Yeah, but obviously the, the AB 1755 like work started long before it got, you know, approved. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm looking at the legislative history. It was yeah. brought to the floor in February of 2016. Okay, brought to, is it called the legislative floor? The state assembly? Like, state oh, assembly it's, it's, um. Introduced maybe would it be? Would that be the word? Yeah. Like the introduce the bill? Yeah. Okay, was February 2016? Yeah. Okay. Second. There's also Cal Data, which was, yep. um, it started off as the California Open Data Working Group, which started in December 2013 and 2016 and then it became Cal data in 2017 which is likely when um, the data.ca.gov went um, live in its current version but um, the relaunch of the data happened in 2015. Oh the relaunch was 2015. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm reading their charter just kind of. Thank kind of, you. Yeah. Okay. So there's like a whole bunch of stuff like in the before the symposium that we can add. Um, I think I missed the thing that you said about CalData. So it was called something else before it was CalData? Yeah, it was, um, where was that? So it was called the California Open Data Working Group. Mm -hmm. um, starting, it started at the end of 2013 and went to October 2016. 
and then at that point it evolved into the Cal, what's now referred to as Caldata. Um, but and I have group, been to Caldata. Is there is the capitalization like this? Just the C and the D, or yeah, just the C and the D. Okay, with a space or not? No, no space. No. Okay. And we can have Greg look at this um, as well. This is more for just Adi to get a sense of like what visuals and so forth. And then I think the discussion with people at the end of day one will be on like, you know, how do we represent the California Open Data Working Group evolving into CalData? Do we just call it CalData? Like hopefully somebody who attends a lot of the meetings, not just, you know, those of us out of town for a couple of times would you know, have some preferences there. You can talk about the data federation, which happened in 2018 with the Natural Resources Agency mm -hmm. and their portal. That was a result of AB 1755 work. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Is there a date for the safer? So uh, that's really new. Hold on. Um, too many browsers open. Where did I have it? Um, safer. Program background. I mean, they just hired the person to start running it. So, okay, there's a. 2019, um, it came as a result of SB 200, um, which was the Safe and Affordable Drinking Water Fund. So it's, it's, it's brand new. It's 2019 to 